Thank you, viewers. I decided to um, give this freezer a rest because I've got to clean it and they're going to um, seal up these cracks. It tends to happen with these newer freezers. The newest chest freezers I wouldn't touch if they were on fire, I wouldn't piss in them, that's for sure. You're better off with a plastic bag, it's more durable than the bloody Chinese freezers you get nowadays. So I scored this one. Um, it's a 1970s Leonard, made in New Zealand, it's got an Australian made. Tecumseh Kirby compressor in there. The um, interesting thing about that Tecumseh compressor, it doesn't have the Kirby service valve um, on it. It's interesting. It's the first Tecumseh um, or mini Tecumseh compressor I've come across that does not have a Kirby service valve on it. So it's got the ordinary um, the pinched off uh, service line. Kind of unique. So Australian made Tecumseh compressor, but the freezer comes from New Zealand. Uh, it's an allied industries plug top, a very common with New Zealand um, appliances in the 70s and 80s. I've um, picked it up, plugged this thing in. It worked, but it wouldn't turn off. I found it was a bit dicky. It's just a thermostat. So I claimed and fixed all that up. The, um, I got us from my local uh, electrical goods, uh, uh, Jackie Bell, a local. Um, Appliance repair slash um, electrical uh, uh, sale, sailor, electric, you know, electronic store. Because I normally um, sell these off as eskies, but I asked the guy and he's like, yeah, take it for free. Like, okay, cool, thanks. So I kind of drive past, I've been there for a week or so. This looks like a nice old freezer, so I'm going to go past here and ask him about it. Had a closer look, oh, it's a Leonard, and look at here. I've got a condenser inside here. The half of the condenser is behind this vent. There's a condenser in here behind this vent, which is, um, goes through the cooling um, coil on the bottom of the compressor. It's quite of interesting. Uh, cleaned it right up. I um, got about 20 dead mice out of the bloody compressor compartment. It was full of dead mice, this thing. Must have been through a mouse plague and kept on going. The only thing that stopped was the uh, thermostat was a bit dicky. I had to hit it a bunch of times and it started working. But um, I've uh, pulled it all apart and cleaned it with some deoxid and sprayed some uh, lubricant, freed it all up so it works, and it started working reliably. So there's a blanking plate here which just clips out. I might even um, get a, uh, a little um, temperature readout. Like here, a screen, the LED display to tell me the temperature inside the um, freezer. That'd be handy. Four that it was on. I did play with it. It moves nice and freely now. It clicks off. That all works now. So all it was was a thermostat, near the bloke was some, that's what the other was with the scrap. What a nice looking freezer. How yeah, cool does it look? I like that retro design. The top's some um, vinyl wrapped. This was filthy, but I had used some of potassium hydroxide and water mixture and those um, magic erasers you buy at Cheapest Chips. This thing cleaned right up. It was pretty clean inside to begin with, but they had chilies and oregano in there. So it must have come from an Italian family. They would have used it for sauce and things like that. But I, I know the smell, it's familiar. There's a little bit of crack, that's all it's got. Australian Standard, the old Australian Standard logo. Nice and cold. The organised must stuff a bit better in there. That's a 160 litre, this is a 150 litre. I guess no, a 140 is like there. 150, then we go 160, then it goes 200. This one's still a good freezer. Still a bloody good freezer. Just um, a little small. I was going to use that one there or that one there, but I've got um, I've got to make a bit of extra room for that big one. Since this one is so nice, um, it's about the same age as that old Frigidaire chest freezer. Both of them about the same era. So, that one's a Frigidaire made in Australia, which I um, definitely want to keep that because Frigidaire is um, Holden related. So since Holden's no longer exists, it'd be um, worth something. Let it cycle off and I'll plug it in here, just so I've got a bit of extra um, lead and I can neaten up my cover management. Yeah, there isn't that much power at all. Not much difference in power. You can kind of see where the coils are on the frost line. Yeah, I can see what the um yeah. See, you've added storage, one hundred and forty liters. 
But this compressor only uses about net max, about the same power level as this one. There isn't much difference in overall power consumption between the two. So um, yeah, that's it looking good. And this is all original too. R12. R12. Um, definitely has, has never been um, opened up, so it's original charge in the system. So I oh, just assumed it was low on gas, so it didn't have any gas in it when a guy told me it didn't work. I said, okay, got no gas. Maybe I can see if I can find if there's a leak in it or I can re gas it. But I just plugged it in. It wasn't, didn't work quite first, so I wrapped the thermostat and it came alive and it started getting cold. It's like, oh, beauty, it works. I let it run for a bit overnight before I cleaned it, and sure enough, I got fully down the temperature and cycled off as it should. So it's, um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. What a nice looking, um, how cool does that handle look there? That's quite neat. You don't get that in the, um, these new, uh, new, newest chest feeders now. The newest ones, what I don't like over those Chinese heaps of shit, you poke them and you can dent the inner liner, which I don't like that. You drop something sharp in an ice block or something like that, you can pinch the uh, pump through the evaporator. Not good. Anyway, that'd be enough for now. Thanks for watching.